Anyways, today I'm making a video about okay. crochet. Books. Crochet books, that's what we're talking about today. Anyways, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, and I'm finally doing it, and I've tried so many times, and we're doing my best, but I've already talked about these books at least twice. Let's get started. This is the first book. It's called Whimsical Stitches. It's by Lauren Espy. This is the first book I bought when I first started getting into Amigurumi. I'm gonna put it on the shelf so it looks cool. Now it's back here, set up all nice. So the first book is a book that a lot of people recommend for the first Amigurumi book to purchase. And there's a reason behind that. A lot of the patterns are easy and using simple shapes. And there's also minimal sewing involved. So it's pretty beginner friendly. And there's a lot of variety in it. There's different sections for aquatic animals, farm animals, foods. There's a pumpkin pie that's really cute. And then strawberries and blueberries that I love to make. And the thing with that is that if you make them smaller than what they recommend in the book, using a smaller hook and a smaller yarn, then you can shrink down the amigurumi. And make like keychains or earrings out of them. The one problem I have with this book is that it recommends a worsted weight yarn and a 4.25 millimeter hook, which I think is too large for that. I'll put up a little graphic. Boop, 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 boop. But basically for worsted weight yarn, I would recommend using a three and a half millimeter hook to get tighter stitches so that when you stuff it, the stitches don't like spread apart to where you can see the stuffing. And then if you're wondering, I use a 2.5 to a 2.75 millimeter hook for a DK weight yarn. So it's just something you gotta experiment with. It'll depend on your tension. But personally, I think 4.25 millimeters is like too large of a hook for this kind of yarn that it's recommending you use. At the end of the day, I recommend this book to anyone who is wanting to learn amigurumi for the first time, or you're a complete beginner to crochet, or you're looking for simpler patterns that are fun to make but not too detailed or time-consuming. I forgot to say something. This is actually the only book that I was mentioning that isn't by Meteor Books, the publishing company. So everything else you'll be able to buy on their site, and if there's a link, I'll put a link. But everything else should be available on amigurumi.com or on Amazon, obviously, because everything comes from Amazon. So the next books I want to talk about are actually two that I have from a series. It's Unicorns, Dragons, and More Fantasy Amigurumi. And then that same book, but the third one. Just got this one. The next book I want to talk about obviously has a more like fantasy creatures in it. Unicorns and dragons, because that's the name of the book. The third one doesn't have as many as the first one does. I mean, it has the same amount of patterns, but like less dragons and unicorns. I think there's one of each. This one is actually the second one I ever got, and you can tell because it's like very annotated and chewed up by my dogs and stuff, but I really like this one. There's a few patterns in here that I've made. Um, let's see. I've made seven out of 14, so half of them, but I've made a lot of those multiple times. And this one actually isn't by one singular person, just like the rest of the books aren't, except for one of them. It's made by a collection. It, the publisher basically provides a collection of different Amigurumi patterns by different designers, and this goes for both of the books. But Everything I'm saying goes for both of these books. But... Basically, there are a lot of different designers that you and you can easily use this to like check out different designers and see how different patterns are written and that kind of thing. I would recommend this book for anyone looking to improve their amigurumi skills and trying to go above the level that you're introduced to at in Whimsical Stitches. There's a few in this book that I've crocheted multiple times for other people. This There's a lot of imp important patterns that are very desirable if you're selling your books or gifting them to people with children. 
people just love these books for for gifts and there's a lot of variety a lot of different types of patterns not just unicorns and dragons and there's also more availability to be a creative with the color choices you make because in whimsical stitches there's basically like like strawberries pie turtles if you're going to make those things you're more or less going to go with the same colors and these they're more fantasy oriented dolls so you're more likely to be creative with your color choices and find out what colors and yarns you like to use with your projects so that's the main reason i would recommend these books is if you're trying to improve or want to experiment with different colors and things yeah there's a lot of really cute patterns that's the two books there are three obviously like there's a second one but i just don't have it yet so in general these are like intermediate patterns but there is one in the first one that is not in the first one that's a different book that i'm about to talk about the next book i want to talk about is mini kingdom i thought this whole time it was many kingdoms but apparently it's just one kingdom mini kingdom who is this by oh I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but I don't know how to say that. Olka Novitska? This book is a good book. It's a good book. Mini Kingdom is a book that is interesting in the fact that it uses a singular base pattern for like 90% of the patterns in the book. So the bodies are all the same. And then you crochet their clothes and their hair and their hats separately. Which is cool, but it also means that they're interchangeable. So if you want the milkmaid with a wizard hat, you can make that and it would still line up properly to where it was still proportional. And I think that's really cool. It is a little more beginner friendly than the last two books I talked about, but it does offset the stitches. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means instead of getting the spiral shape on the top, Boop. The stitches are offset so that the star motif isn't as visible when you're crocheting it where the increases are. And that's interesting, but I don't usually do it because I am used to it and I don't mind how the star looks. So I would recommend this book to anyone pretty much except for like super super beginners. And the cool thing I like about it is that they remind me the patterns that are in the book are reminiscent of like Dungeons and Dragons. So if you have a D and D group or friends who like fantasy worlds, then you can crochet dolls that are reminiscent of their characters or them. And another thing I like about it is the wizard hats are really cool. You can see right there the wizard hat. It, you can upscale it with a 5mm hook and worsted weight yarn instead of smaller yarn and smaller hook. And then it will basically be a hat for a human head. And that's cool because then you can make little dolls and then the hats, you can match hats with your little doll. It's really cute and I love it. And I will insert a picture of my spouse wearing one of the wizard hats I made because my spouse is cute. The hat is cute. It's cute. I love it. Okay. Other than that, the book's pretty basic, because like I said, it's the same pattern. It's like one pattern, but then there's so much variety that makes it interesting. It's a good book, and they're so small. I use a DK weight yarn and a 2.5 millimeter hook, and they turn out maybe that big. There's not a lot to say about this book, but it's another one where you can experiment with colors and different sizings and stuff like that, and get a lot of different results than are just plain on the paper in the book, so... Also, I forgot to say this in this version of the video, but if you're someone who doesn't know what amigurumi is, it's basically a Japanese craft of knitting or crocheting dolls. So it's an umbrella term for making dolls out of yarn. And here's the definition. Boop! So the next book I want to talk about is Dinosaurs, Mammoths, and Prehistoric Amigurumi which is what I would consider in the same series as the dinosaurs and unicorns. But one thing is that this has one of the hardest patterns I've ever made, which is this T-Rex on this, this T-Rex. 
and it just took forever. A lot of shaping, a lot of small parts, a lot of sewing. So everything other than that in this book is pretty basic to intermediate, but that would be like an advanced pattern, in my opinion. But it, it worked up nicely, it looks awesome, but it takes forever, and it's just a lot of work. So if you want a detailed T-Rex pattern, and you already know what you're doing, this is the way to go. But if you want a simple one, look elsewhere, kindly, because... It's a pretty advanced pattern, I gotta say. I still love it. I love making it, but I probably won't do it again because it was a lot of work. That's pretty much all I have to say about that book because I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, this one, since I've already talked about the other two, the Dinosaurs and Unicorns books. Just imagine that, but with dinosaurs. Also, a couple of them have, like, really cute accessories, like there's one in an egg that's breaking, and that's adorable. Pika pow Pika- Changing the subject, it's Pika pow Pika pow Pika pow I think I'm saying that right. This one is by Yan Shenkel. Pika pow is a book with 20 patterns by Yan Shenkel. Written name, because I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I have the second one here, but I have the first one as a PDF on my iPad, so I've worked from both of them. I saved Pika Pow for last because it's actually my favorite Amigurumi book to work out of. I've probably not made as many patterns as I want to, but it's really fun regardless. I love the way that the patterns are put together, and overall you can learn a lot from the way that this person... Has that been there the whole time? I guess it had to have been. You can learn a lot from the way that the patterns are put together and sewn together and crocheted together. And I think that's really cool from a book, to see from a book, because a lot of... I don't want to say crochet patterns do it all the same way, but a lot of crochet patterns like use the same techniques to assemble the dolls, and so it's cool to learn new techniques on how to do that differently. There's a lot of animals, and I think they look very quirky in a good way. Um, there's a turtle with a backpack. There's a frog. I love frogs. Who doesn't love frogs? I love this book because they're almost like a stylized cartoony version of the dolls, of the animals that the dolls are made modeled after. I guess Jasper wants to sit with me for the last part of the video. But that's all the books that I have time to record about today. If you want to know about any more of them in more detail, let me know. And I can make another video going over some of the patterns and things in more detail. And if you want to see more books, comment. And I'll try to get a review out on them as well. Thanks for watching. Bye. If you keep talking bad about yourself, I'm gonna make you be in the video. Books! <laughs> Blue books! <laughs> I still wanna nom it. I just like press it up to my face so I can feel it on my face. Today we're gonna talk about the theoretical existence of books. Books. This entire video is gonna be entirely unhinged. And gonna take like 16 hours to edit. Drama. Anyways. I love how that out of context is just like, why would that be traumatizing? But I'm not kidding. I don't know what- what am I supposed to look at? Myself? This is Shrock. He's my pet rock. Today we're gonna talk about books. Many a book. The same type of book. Crochet books. For people who make dolls. That's cringy. I feel super fucking awkward. Broski just be crawling around on the floor like a rabid fucking hyena. What the hell? Suckless? Less sucky. Are you still trying? Why are you still trying? Bitch, I don't know! Because I'm dumb as shit. It fucked up. Hello. Welcome. I feel awkward with you just staring at me.